with that, Mark Stonich and his Merlin. Okay. One of the, it, it was clearly designed from scratch only for Sturmey Arch. I believe it's a 1964. And it's got, it's got cable guides down the side here, which I've never seen this sort of thing. And the cable guide at the back is uh, right on the side of the uh, stay instead of the top. So it's clearly for Sturmey, but they did something very unique. They used two left Campy 1010 dropouts so that they didn't have to cut off the derailleur hanger. And they bent the, they bent the tabs over, and then they gave it a beautiful chrome finish. And I thought that was very interesting, but how many here remember Artie Johnson from Laugh-In? Very interesting, but also very stupid. <laughs> Because Campagnolo 1010 dropouts are four threads thicker than the standard plate uh, dropouts that you would get with with an old British bike, the ones that were cut from sheet. So then it's equipped with an FM hub, a wonderful device. If you look at a standard four-speed Sturmey Archer, you got high, direct, low, and bottom. Well, on the FM. They squeeze these two together to give you three close ratio gears and a granny. Wonderful. But they only made a long axle for the FM one year. And finding one of those would be, the odds would be like getting hit by a lightning on the way to cash your lottery ticket during an eclipse. <laughs> so there were very few gear threads of engagement and a Sturmey Archer axle only has threads about 60% of the diameter. So there's all kinds of Sturmey Archer FMs that are stripped out. Uh, so he, uh, he, he bought what he was told was a long FM axle at an exorbitant expense and it was an FW. So I put an FW hub in the, eight, in the FM shell, but the FM doesn't have any flats. So I had to invent a way. I would love to know what Sturmey Archer made to take this in and out. So that was fun. But now I've got FM guts in there. The other problem was that the ID of a Reynolds seat tube is 27.4, but after you weld it or braze it, everybody ends up with a 27.2 seat post. Well, this one had a 26.8 because it was so lumpy inside here. So then the ears were folded in. So to get the ears, people will try f pulling the ears out. Somebody on the suggested, and I loved them for this, using a one inch quill stem and tightening it and pushing the ears out. And then I reamed out, but then it wouldn't clamp. It would probably clamp a 27 oat seat post. They don't, a 27.2, which everybody owns a 27.2 seat post. No, you don't. None of them are ever 27.2. They're all undersized. So I bought a 27.4, which was oversized. <laughs> so I made a 27.3 <laughs> with my new lathe. <laughs> then the fenders were cracked, so I backed it up with uh, orange cloth with uh, two-part epoxy to patch the fenders. Uh, then I can't ride full-length cranks, and you can't shorten uh, modern. You can't shorten old-style cranks because they're too skinny. But a modern set of cranks, all brightly anodized, would look terrible on here. So I took uh, I took a modern set of cranks that didn't look too modern, and ate all the anodizing off with oven cleaner. And then, if you want to give a nice vintage looking polish so it looks nice and old, you take paste polish like Simichrome, but you apply it with 4 aught steel wool. And it get, you get this nice gray, dull finish, which is a nice way to make new parts look old. So then I decided, well, I should do that with my favorite handlebars. Only I made the mistake, it didn't all come off the first time. I, I sanded and polished the areas that would be exposed so they don't look all pitted and terrible. I'm not sure they're safe to ride, but I had to remove so much material to get under the pitting that it used to say Nitto here and B115, that's all gone. Uh, then a guy from my human part vehicle club comes by and says, what would you give me for this saddle? 
It's a B-15. And uh, I made him the lowest offer I could make that would allow me to sleep at night. And he says, nah, give me 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I own, between Jane and I, we must have 22, 23 set Brooks saddles. None compared to this. It's like on the first America's Cup race, when, some, when the queen asks, well, who's in second? There is no second, ma'am. This is just amazing. <laughs> what I still have to do is some, it's got the hanger for center pull brakes. It still has this hanger, but somebody put side pulls on it. So I, I think I have enough parts to put together a pair of Mafex for it. But it is just the sweetest damn ride. It is so nice. But yeah, it's just... If, Peter, if I was, Peter has a question. Oh, um, I own a, uh, owned a 1934 Merlin, which I gave to my brother-in-law. Um, and the way you can distinguish the Bob Jackson built Merlins versus the Merlin brother built Merlins is on the Merlin brother machines, the letters on the down tube are stacked horizontally instead of going across the down tube. I'm, I'm sorry, they're stacked vertically rather than going across the down two horizontally. So you have the M where the N is and facing down. Is there anything else that went? Oh, and by the way, uh, on the subject of not having enough thread engagement and stripping things out, if anybody is really short on thread engagement on their Sturmy hubs, I went to the hardware store yesterday. These are grade 8. Oh, uh, and the other thing is because the chrome dropouts, you had to really crank down on the nuts to keep it from slipping. So you strip out the threads. Now, I have a new lathe which will cut 26 thread per inch threads. And I'm thinking about building up this in weld and trying to tap outward and cleaning them. But it'll never fit, go on this bike. But And if that ever works, maybe there's probably a Probably half the FW axles out there are stripped now because of people putting them in more modern bikes. But I picked up a bunch of these grade eight uh, washers, which are exactly 13, 30 seconds ID and have a very coarse textured surface and they're very thin. So they'll give you about one, millim one thread more engagement. And if anybody wants any, I just picked up a bunch to give away. <laughs> Um, if anybody needs any, let I me know. Some. You gave me some. I got some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really nice. They're really nice, and this coarse texture will dig in. Anyway, that was what I had to show you. Here's another one. Oh, A another very interesting but dumb thing. My favorite toolkit here has an actual eight millimeter on there. And I'm, I don't like to carry on around any more tools than I need, like I cut half of these short. So I got the brilliant idea to weld a, a, a uh, crank fixing bolt to a 15 millimeter socket and made it deep enough to fit on a Sturmy Archer. And I thought, why am I clever? And then I realized that with an FW, I'd have to take out the indicator rods to use it. <laughs> Which you don't want to do with an FW. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Mark.